That's in a big country there, from a big country. Uh, interested to get your, your uh, views on having seen that now. How, how long is it since you've looked at that, guys? Six years. Well, I've looked at it within the past six years, but I think it's six years since we actually filmed it, and it's very amusing to see it. <laughs> I look about 12 in it. Well, Mark, your hair was a little bit shorter in those it days. It was, yeah. I just never had it cut since. <laughs> anyway, it's, it's quite a comprehensive tour that you're doing in the country. I mean, you've been to Galway, Cork, and Tralee so far, and it's Dublin tomorrow at the National Stadium. I suppose you could have easily just come in and done a couple of dates at the National Stadium here in Dublin and gone back home quite happy. So was it a deliberate decision to, to get out there and see the rest of the country? Yeah, very much so. Any time that, that we've come through Ireland, we've always wanted to try and do as many gigs here as we possibly can. Plus, it's, it's uh, a place where we have a lot of fun, and we've always been made very welcome here, always been made uh, to feel very comfortable here, and it's, it's a very beautiful place to come. You know, the people are absolutely amazing. Mm. So we love to go out there and, and get to see a bit of the country and meet people and, and play in as many places as we can, really. Mm. You're to be commended for doing it, Mark, by the way, because uh, so many bands come over here and they play Dublin and they head back home, and it makes it so much so difficult for people who live outside the area uh, mm. to get here. So I'm sure you, you've gained a lot of fans as a result of that. What about fun on the road? You seem like a, a fun couple of guys anyway in here, <laughs> certainly during, while we were watching that video. We just, we just had, uh, what was it, two hours drive of hell? Yeah, we just uh, had a severely rushing rush drive here this morning from Galway, so yeah, well, I think that the, uh, it's good to be able to be serious about your work, but I think you can do it without being full mm. face. you know, it is a... Uh, a very enjoyable way to make a living through sharing songs with people and sharing ideas with people mm -hmm. and, and I think that uh, it's something which we've always been we've always thought of ourselves as being very lucky to be able to do that you know okay and so I'd say we certainly don't take ourselves too seriously that's for sure. H how long have you been uh, in, in playing in bands now Stuart? How many years? Uh, 15 years. 15 <laughs> years and does that take in the skids as well? It does yes it, I've been uh, the first live shows I did were, were when I was 15 years old with a mm -hmm. band called Tattoo and then I started the skids a couple of years after that Mm. So it's, it's been, uh, I think, 12 years professionally. Mm. Like what happened to the skids? I mean, they, they seem to be on, on the crest of quite a big wave, and then suddenly they were no more. Yeah, well, I think they, uh, I had to have some very happy memories of the skids. You know, we, we, I think we did some, some uh, really great material and had some really great times together. But towards the end, everybody just started pulling in different directions. Richard was becoming interested in, in different things uh, to myself. I was always, always wanted to, to be... Uh, uh, a musician really and Rick, Richard was getting really into acting and poetry and stuff and, and so I thought oh, it was time that just to move on and do, do something else, something else that, that I felt that, uh, that everyone in the band would be committed to. And where did you come along Mark? Were you in on the early days? Um, uh, since Big Country started me and, me and Tony had joined um, Bruce mm. and Stuart and me and Tony came from a band called On The Air where we were in a band together for most of our earlier career. Um, as and a three piece. Was it always rock and roll? Yeah and we, we supported the skids on tour yeah. and then um, we went our own way, we split our band up and Stuart went his way and then we came together via mm. um, us doing session work and getting a phone call again. And the rest is history as they say. You mentioned <laughs> Richard, Richard Jobson there, I saw him interviewed recently and he was extremely reluctant to talk about his association with, with Big Country and, and with the guys in the band. W was, there, was, was it an amicable split or, or what? Um, well things between Richard and myself were always uh, a bit fractious, you know, it, it, it is, uh, I think we're, in many ways we're very similar characters, you know, we have a very clear view of what it is that we want to do, but uh, I think that there were things said at the time which really are over and done with now and I still see Richard quite regularly and we get on famously together, we get on much better now than we did when we were working together, you know, which is, is a good thing, mm. but uh, he's interested in very different things to, to what I am, you know, and, and that, that's the way that, that things are. You know? What's he, I believe he's, a, he's one of the top models in Europe these days, is, is that I, true? I, don't know, he, I find that hard to believe as a matter of fact <laughs> when, I, when I think about it. He, he claims to be, but Richard uh, is a great storyteller, I have to say, he's a uh, He's, since I've met him, uh, what, 12 years ago, he's had about eight different life stories in, in that space of thing, you know. So uh, I take what things that he says with a very big pinch of salt, but that he does, that's part of what he does for a living, yes. Mm -hmm. You must have good memories of playing here, Mark, uh, with, with uh, David Bowie at Slane. Uh, was that a good, good gig for you? Yeah, it was brilliant. I mean, anywhere we play, if, if it's outside or indoors, is, is fantastic. Mm -hmm. It was good to, good to play outdoors at that point. You're, you're playing fairly small venues mm -hmm. uh, on this tour. Is that a good thing? Yeah, from from the band's point of view, do you prefer yeah, that? Yeah, well, I, I don't prefer it, but it's, it's good actually to be quite close to the audience again, because when we were doing the, the, the really big places, mm. um, you do lose a little bit of contact, but it's, it's you know... It makes it makes it a, a lot easier as far as sound and things like that are concerned as yeah, well. Yeah, I, uh, I think to be quite honest, at this point, we, we really have to play small venues anyway. We've had uh, a fair bit of business hassle over, over the past years, which has meant we haven't been able to, to play as often as we would like, you know? Mm. 
So it's nice that when you actually get back to start touring again, to start off in small places and, and build it up, you know, mm. rather than just think, oh, well, we'll book a tour in all the biggest venues that we can possibly get to, you know. Mm. And it's, it's nice to have that intimacy out there, definitely. Mm. Okay, I want to talk about the new LP piece in our time in just a few moments, but first we'll have a look at the beer commercial. His big country with uh, <laughs> oh, no, one great sure. thing. You know, well, it's not a commercial, it's a video. <laughs> <laughs> You've seen that. Um, one great thing from Big Country, our beatbox guest today. You're laughing during that as well, fellas. What's so funny about that? Uh, is it a while since you've seen that one? Yeah, it is. It's, uh, it's funny because that's the, uh, the uh, song which we um, supplied to uh, a certain company for a beer commercial in Scotland, you know. I want to talk about that, as a matter of fact. Huey Lewis was in this uh, studio not so long ago, and he, was, uh, he, was, he wasn't exactly giving out about people who, who get involved in deals like that, but he was sort of saying that he would certainly never do it for... for very, all the right yeah. reasons. So, so how come you guys got involved in it? Well, I, th the I think that they, the, well, the reason that, that we got involved in it was quite basically that we needed the money we were skinned. <laughs> 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 well, right it, was, it was right in the middle of all our business troubles. And thought, hmm, we're going to get some dosh, you know? Because yeah. uh, not only do we have to be responsible for ourselves, but there's other people who, uh, who rely on us for their, 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 their uh, living as well, you know? So mm. it's, it's kind of... But I, I have to say that I think that, uh, that things like that shouldn't be, uh, be overemphasized. I think in certain ways, it is a bad thing that it's, it's simply uh, beer companies which are becoming in, involved in the, in the promotion of music. I think that, uh, but what you have to do is, is actually realise that the, the people out there uh, who actually listen to bands and who uh, are into music do have brains and intelligences of their own, you know, and I think you should, uh, it's, it's a shame, but a lot of musicians seem to credit people who are interested in, in them as having absolutely no intelligence at all. I, I would like to think that, that, that young people do have, have an awareness of their own and, and that there is enough education around for people to be well aware of the problems that, that can be uh, inherent in, in the abuse of alcohol and the abuse of any substance at all, you know. And I think it's, it's about time that we started relying on, on, uh, on building people up uh, as, as uh, individuals in their own right and granting them a degree of intelligence and a degree of trust and giving give them knowledge rather than just saying simply this is a bad thing or, or this is a bad thing. Let people know why, why it's bad and what the, the ins and outs of it are rather than simply saying oh this is, is not happening. Well said Stuart, I must say, that was, that was alright, we'll, we'll, we'll move away from sponsorship in that case. By the way, that video won a few awards as well, didn't it? It did, yes, it's, it was our most successful video as videos go. Right. And Bruce actually had, had Bruce a lot to do with the, in the, the with ideas the behind the guy mm -hmm. Storm do, do, you, do you get involved directly with the, with the making of the videos or do you let whoever is directing and producing just go so, ahead and sometimes do Sometimes, it, it depends, you know, I, I, I tend to be, uh, I'm not greatly enamoured of, of videos, I have to say. I find it uh, very difficult to transfer something which which I feel is, is a very um, a mental thing, you know, the, the pictures that I try and create in mm. songs and, and lyrics. To, to tie that to one set of visuals, I'm not very comfortable with that. You know, mm. I think it gives people too much one fixed idea of a song, mm. but I maybe like want to show three or four different sides of something. Okay. I want to talk about the new LP, Peace in Our Time. Um, the, the album, as the title suggests, has, has a little bit of a message there in, in it, uh, a warning about the, the, the nuclear arms race, if you like. Who is supposed to be listening to these uh, songs, Stuart, or, or have people given up listening to political songs and songs about nuclear war and things like that? Uh, I, I don't know. The, the way that, uh, that I write, like to write songs is, is I like to put real-life situations and real-life characters in there, you know, so that, that at least I feel that the music that I'm involved in and committed to is a living, breathing part of the environment that it comes out of, that it is a part of society rather than, than something that exists in a void for its own gratification, you know. And uh, I think that, that, that uh, people are interested in, in music being something other than, than three minutes worth of just dance music, you know. I think that, that people like to have questions raised and points debated. I'm certainly not a political writer from a point of view of having one set dogma or theory that I'd like to say to people, well, this is the right way and this is the wrong way. What I much prefer to do is, is pre present situations that, that, uh, that people find themselves in and tell a story about it. Mm. And, uh, and that's the way that, that I do things. So I, I think people are always interested in storytelling and interested in music as a form of communication as well as, as uh, something to bop around. So you're not necessarily trying to ram a message down anybody's throat or anything No, not like at that. all. I mean, even with the Peace in Our Time thing, people may well interpret it simply as a plea for worldwide sanity, and I'm quite happy with that. But for me personally, there's other interpretations of it. You know, it could be Peace in Our Time, with a question mark after it, which puts an ironical slant in mm -hmm. it, or some individual's own quest for their peace in their own time, which makes it intimate and, and personal. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.